Hello and welcome to another one of our videos. In this one we're going to be looking at scripting ad actions. What are ad actions? Well if I go up to this door here for example and I use my scroll menu then I get an option saying open door. This is an ad action. I'm going to show you how you can script these into your own mission as they're quite a useful way of allowing players to interact with the world. What I'm going to do is pause this video for five seconds and a list of annotations will appear. If you click on that, you'll um, go to the bit of information you need to know about. If not, um, just watch the video all the way through. This is going to be part one of two videos I believe. In the first one I'm going to be showing you the very very basics as we've just seen in the annotations and in the second one I'm going to be showing you a bit more advanced stuff we can do with it. Uh, it's all pretty simple though. So let's begin. So what I think we're going to do is we're going to create a simple teleport script. This won't necessarily be the best way to make a teleport script however it will allow me to demonstrate all the different elements of the ad action. So the situation we have here is we have Captain Miller, Captain Miller, who sounds Australian rather than British in the game, and we have a flag. Um, what I'm going to do is start by giving the ad action an ID or a name, and I'm going to call it my action. My action equals what the name is useful for is removing the ad action afterwards. Um, in some situations we may want to only allow one use of the ad action, so we give it a name. If you're not too bothered about the name, you can just write null or the numerical zero equals something, or you can just forget about it altogether and carry on with the next part. In our example I'm going to use my action equals. After the equals sign, um, we're going to use the player or the object that the action is attached to. As I'm doing this inside the flagpole's initialization, all I simply need to do is write this, referring to the flagpole itself. Uh, you could do this in a script, for example, and say unit one, add action. The next part is the command itself, so add action. And after that, we're going to open some square, square brackets and put a semicolon at the end. Inside these square brackets, there's two things you need as a minimum. And the first always appears in quotation marks. And that is the name, uh, or what's going to appear. What we did before is we went onto a door and we saw it said open door. In this, we're just going to write tele port. And that'll appear as the um, in the top left of your screen when you go up to the ad action. We're going to put a comma, and the next thing we're going to do is again open quotation marks, and in here goes the name of the script that you're calling. Um, so in this example, I'm going to just call it my script.sqf. And that's it, that's a basic ad action. What it's going to do is it's going to show the word teleport, and it's going to fire my script.sqf. We do have a third basic option, which is which is good to understand, and that is arguments. And what we essentially have when we call the script is we have four pieces of information. The first three that are transmitted to the script are always transmitted, and they are the target, and that refers to the object which the ad action is assigned to. In this case, that would return the flagpole. The caller. Um, is a second piece of information that's always sent to the script and that is the unit that activates the ad action and the third piece is the ID of the ad action. In our case we've called that uh, my action. The This will be assigned a numerical value and sent to the script. The last thing we can do is we can add an argument section. Now what I'm going to do is put another comma and I'm going to open some square brackets and in those square brackets I can type different bits of an array. At the first I'm going to 
put as a name, so that's in quotation marks. And that is going to be marker 1. I'm going to close the quotation marks and I'm going to put a comma. And the next is going to be the number 3. And that's it. We've created some arguments. Now that bit of information is going to be passed into the script as well. And we can use that. What I'm going to do is pause video and tap out of the game and we'll have a look at where you put the script and how you can now use this information to make a script or a teleport script in our case. And now that we're on my desktop, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a SQF file and we're going to put that into our mission folder. If you already know how to do that and annotations appearing now, you can click on that and skip forward to the part where we look at the scripting itself. For those of you who don't, uh, you want to go into all programs, you want to go into accessories, and you want to open notepad. What I'm going to do is just paste in some script I made earlier. And this is the part you want to pay attention to. It's save as, and we want to delete the .txt, and we're going to call it my script.sqf. And then we're going to press save. And I'm going to save that to my desktop. What you'll see here is you've created the file. Uh, my icons changed just because I'm using Notepad++ on my computer and it recognizes SQF files. I'm going to drag that to one side and I'm going to find the mission next. Missions you've made in the editor can be found by pressing documents. They can be going to armor free other profiles. You can go to your username, whatever that might be at the moment. You can go into missions and I just need to find the one I've made now. And uh, it is called Ad Action something or other. Oh, there we go. Ad Action Mission. Go in there and you'll see I've got myscript.sqf already in there. But all you need to do is drag the myscript.sqf into that folder and we're good to go. Since I have a copy in here already, I'm going to open that up and I'm going to open it in Notepad++ this time. And that's just so I can zoom in and it's much easier to see. All the code and things I'm going to put into the description of this video and I'm going to be using a new method of sharing that uh, so there'll be a link to a website and just click on that and you'll be able to see this code for yourself. What we'll do now is we'll look at the script itself and what we can see here on lines 1 to 4 is the default information that is sent to the script. Um, so we're using the select command and we're just selecting different bits of the information 0 to 4, so there's so 0 to 3, sorry, uh, representing the 4 bits of information we talked about. Um, on the left of each of these equal signs you'll see there's a name. This name doesn't matter what it is, you can call it anything you want. Um, but I've just gone for target equals this select 0, which is going to return the flagpole, um, the object which the action is assigned to, it says in the wiki. Uh, caller equals this select 1, and that's the unit that activates the action, so that's going to be our Captain Miller guy down on the ground. Um, ID is the ID we set. This is translated into a numerical value, um, but you can still in the script, for example, use flagpole remove action id or you could say flagpole remove action my action as we called it earlier and arguments equals this select free and as we remember we put two different elements to the argument and that was marker one and the number three and if we look just below here on line six and seven i've given them two names one is arg one and the other is arg two uh, arg1 equals this select free select, <laughs> select 0, bit of a mouthful, but essentially it's saying look at number 3, the arguments, and select the first part of it here, and that becomes marker 1. Same for arg2, the only difference is at the end here it says select 1, and that's selecting the number 3. What we can do then is start writing a bit of a script, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make our caller and I'm going to 
take his name and make him move to marker 1, which we'll place on the map when we go back. So, caller set pause. I'm going to use a pair of normal brackets here. I'm going to put get marker pause, and then I'm going to put arg1. So that's telling caller to move to arg1. The next piece of information I'm going to do is I'm going to use target remove action and then I'm going to use the ID so that means the add action we added earlier that said teleport is now going to disappear and the last thing I'm going to do is use the second part of our argument and I'm going to give it a slight delay so I'm going to put sleep which is just the, the pause the script command. I'm sure you're all familiar with that. Pause for arg2, so sleep arg2, and as we remember, arg2 was the equivalent of free. So it's gonna sleep for three seconds, it's gonna move us to marker pause one, and then it's gonna remove the ID from the target. So there we have it, a very simple teleport script. Uh, I'm gonna press save on that, and I'm gonna tab back into the game. What we can do now that we're back in the game is press F6 and we put a marker down. We're going to call it marker 1, the same as what's in our argument. And we're going to press preview. So we go up to the flagpole and we can see we have the teleport option now. We press teleport, we're going to sleep for arg2 which is 3 seconds. I'm going to be moved like I just got moved then and the action is going to be removed from the flagpole. So if I go back up to the flagpole, hopefully, yep, we have no actions on the flagpole. So that's worked. It's done everything we wanted it to do. Hopefully this has been useful to you. What I'm going to do now is give you two bits of bonus uh, information on this, and I'm going to show you how to make an add action have color. Um, so instead of just being a plain white teleport, you can change it to whatever color you want. And the second thing I'm just going to show you is how you can do this without scripting uh, uh, without scripting externally so you can just do it within the flagpole's init box itself so I'm just going to pause the game and I will see you in a few seconds and the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to change the colour and what we will do is just paste a bit of code into the left of the teleport name and it's a bit of HTML code. The bit you're interested in is the color code itself. And I'll link you in the description of this video to a website where you can choose different color codes. Um, in this case, we've gone for a sort of bluey color, I'm th I think. I don't know. <laughs> I'm colorblind with this sort of thing. Um, so the add action is now going to be a different color to white, which is default color. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take... I'm just going to delete the second two parts of this add action array. And I'm going to write a pair of squiggly brackets instead. And inside these squiggly brackets now, you can actually write code. Um, so if we wrote this, select zero, for example, and then we put side chat, hello, everybody, everyone. If we did that, that is now going to make my character this select one, sorry, it's now going to make my character say hello everyone. So I'll press OK and let's test that out. As we can see the diff the colour has changed on the add action and if I do the add action it says hello everyone and I can spam that a few times. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Next time we're going to be looking at some more advanced stuff um, so hopefully we'll see you then.